Welcome back dear kids. A pleasant morning to you all. This is your science teacher Surekha Panda from Little Angels High School Gwalior. Today we will read chapter 3 Fiber to Fabric. Before starting the chapter, let me share an interesting story with you. According to an old Chinese legend, the Emperor Sai Lang Chai was once asked by the Emperor Wang Ti to find out the cause of damaged leaves of mulberry tree growing in their garden. The Empress noticed white worms eating up the mulberry leaves. She also noticed they were spinning shiny cocoons around them. Accidentally, a cocoon dropped into her cup of tea and a tangle of delicate thread separated from the cocoon. In this way, silk industry began in China and was kept as a closely guarded secret for hundreds of years. Later, traders and travelers introduced silk to the other countries. The route they traveled is still known as Silk Road. Well, this was my story. Hope you like it. Now let's get started with our chapter. Chapter 3. Fiber to Fabric The session plan for today is Introduction of the chapter Types of fibers Wool Rearing and breeding of sheep Processing of fiber to wool Silk Life history of silkworm and sericulture Before starting the chapter, let's know some definitions. What is fiber? Hair-like substance that is the basis of all yarns and fabric is called fiber. Or we can define fibers as long thin continuous thread of elements obtained from plants and animals. What is yarn? Fibers that are twisted together is called yarn. Fabric? Material made by joining yarns through weaving, knitting or felting is called fabric. Or we can say that Fibers are spun together to form yarns and yarns together form fabric. Types of fibers. In class 6 we have read that fibers are of two types, man-made fiber and natural fiber. Examples of man-made fibers are nylon, polyester, rayon, polyethylene, polypropylene, etc. And natural fibers are obtained from plants and animals. From plants, we get cotton, jute, linen, etc. And from animals, we get wool and silk. In today's chapter, we will be discussing wool and silk in detail. Now, let's know about wool. In India, mostly sheep are rare for getting wool. Wool is also obtained from goat, angora goat and yak. Besides, the hair of camel, alpaca and llama are also processed to yield wool. For obtaining wool, sheep are reared and bred. Their hair is cut and processed into wool. We will first discuss the rearing and breeding of sheep. What is rearing? The bringing up and looking after the sheep is called as rearing as shown in picture 1. Rearing means to look after the sheep by providing them food, shelter and health care. Apart from grass, the sheep are fed with pulses, corn and oil cake. Now let's know about selective breeding. The process of selecting parents in order to obtain good quality wool in their offspring is termed as selective breeding. In picture 2, we can see there are two varieties of sheep. One is having a fluffy coat and the other is having a horn that shows it is strong and sturdy. In selective breeding, these two varieties are crossed together to get an offspring that has the quality of both. These breeds of sheep have a thick coat of hair on their body and are called as sheep of good breed. Now let's know about the processing of fibers into wool. It is accomplished in six basic steps. They are shearing, scouring, sorting, removing of burrs and drying, dyeing and rolling. Now let's know about shearing. It is a process of removing the fleece of the sheep along with a thin layer of its skin. Shearing is conducted generally in hot weather so that the sheep do not feel cold. The shearing process do not hurt the sheep because the upper part of the skin is normally dead. Now let's know about scouring. It is a process of removing dirt, grease and dust from the hair removed from the sheep. It is generally done with the help of machines. Third comes sorting. It is a process of separating the hair of the sheep according to their texture. Next we will read about removing of burrs and drying. In this step, the burrs present in the hair of the sheep is picked out. Then the hair is cleaned and dried out. The product so obtained is the wool that can now be converted into fibers. 
Next step is dyeing or coloring. In this step, the fibers are dyed in different colors. Last step, rolling. In this step, the wool obtained is straightened out, combed and rolled into yarns. Now it is ready to be sold in the market. Up next is silk. Silk is a natural fiber which is obtained from silkworm. It is the strongest natural fiber. Silkworm feeds on the leaves of mulberry tree. Now let's know about the life history of a silkworm. The female silk moth lays egg on mulberry leaves. The eggs are hatched into larva called as caterpillar or silkworm. The silkworm feeds on mulberry leaves and changes into pupa and spins a cocoon around itself. The pupa then comes out of the cocoon as a silk moth and in this way the cycle goes on. Let's learn about sericulture. The process of breeding and raising of silkworm to obtain silk is called as sericulture. Sericulture means silk farming. It is a very old occupation in India. Let's know about the process. The healthiest moths are chosen for breeding and laying eggs. The larvae that emerge once the egg hatch are fed mulberry leaves. They continue feeding for about 20 to 35 days. When the silkworm is about 35 days old, it starts spinning a cocoon around itself. This process takes for about 3 to 7 days to complete. The pupa inside the cocoons are killed by putting the cocoons in hot water, which kills the worms as well as loosen the filament. One end of the silk thread is passed through an eyelet and the thread is reeled onto the wheel. And in this way, fiber is extracted from the cocoon. Single filaments are washed, dried and twisted to form yarn. The texture of the fabric depends on the manner of twisting. Now the product is ready to be sold in the market. With this our chapter completes. Hope you like the video. Thanks for watching and stay blessed.